What do NHL star Brad Marchand and out-of-work quarterback from the NFL Cam Newton have in common? It's their birthday, May 11th. May 11th means we will tackle chapter 11 of the book of Proverbs. I'm going to read us just one verse, verse 12. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. In my experience, the number one way we belittle our neighbor is very, very simple. It doesn't come out of ill-meaning or mean-spiritedness. It tends to come from an action that we cannot explain. When we try to piece together the puzzle, there's a piece that's missing. And so we look down on our neighbor. We don't understand their life. We don't understand their days or what's happening with them. And then we don't understand their actions. Rather than come to understand them, rather than have sympathy or compassion with what may or may not be going on in their life at that moment, what they might be grieving or worrying about, Instead, we just say something to ourselves. We tell ourselves the person is foolish or stupid. We tell them that they make no sense. We don't actually tell them that. We just explain away their troubles. We create a backstory that will fill in the gap of the piece that's missing. And when we do it, more often than not, we make the other person look bad. That's something I've seen happen countless times. It happens and it tears apart marriages. It happens and it hurts the relationship between a father and a son or a parent and a child in general where one person does something inexplicable to the other and rather than do the hard work of finding understanding we simply belittle the other to make the problem go away the problem isn't our lack of vision or understanding the problem is the other person's lack of well-being or intelligence or whatever Sometimes we apply this to God. You hear this argument that, you know, God doesn't answer prayers or why do tsunamis or why do earthquakes or why does the COVID pandemic happen? Surely if God was God and good and powerful, he wouldn't allow for all of this. When we do that, we're triangulating again. We're finding a puzzle that we cannot resolve ourselves. And so rather than resolve it, rather than seek real understanding, we simply put ourselves in a judgment position and we find flaws in someone, or in this case, God, and then we content ourselves. The problem in both these cases is that we're not really sure that we have really got to the root of it. The situation hasn't changed. Whatever it was that was bothering us is still bothering us. It's been explained away in a way that's actually particularly unhelpful. In fact, we know that most of the time when we do that, we actually get a misreading of the situation or scenario and we are no further ahead in fact we are coming further away from real and true understanding i think these days this is a helpful thing to remember especially right now because a lot of people during the pandemic are actually quite sad they're quite fearful or anxious maybe they're grieving because they've lost someone maybe they've lost their job and they don't want to tell you that you never know what's going on underneath the surface of someone, especially right now. Many of us are putting on strong faces. We need to get through this together. You have the pot banging for the care staffs and the nurses and whatnot, and that's good. Just as during the wars, you had sort of cheerful moments, but you knew that people were, were grieving underneath. And so right now I'm thinking about how the people of understanding will recognize that each person, no matter how well put together they look to you right now, may not be doing nearly as well as they're suggesting. Maybe they want to talk to you about it, maybe they don't. But at the very least, wisdom lies in trying to be silent or confident with each other, trying to be understanding and sympathetic with each other, knowing that there's so much going on at any given time. Of course, I would suggest if you're among those who think that God is clearly silent or not at work or not strong enough or not good enough because of the pandemic that you take the time to consider how other Christians have resolved this. It's not like Christians haven't dealt with that. It's not like Christians have been problem free. The Bible says we're going to have lots of problems. And so no matter what the problem is, if it's lost jobs or lost kids or whatever it is, Christians have gone through it. And many of them have come out the other side with a faith that is more refined. And so rather than simply slag that, Maybe take a time to consider it, talk to someone or read about people who have gone through that. And if you're having a problem with a neighbor, maybe rather than 
explaining it away in a manner that will just leave the problem hanging. Like if a fence is in the wrong spot or your neighbor always parks the wrong way or whatever, you're not resolving that by simply explaining it away. So how do we get some resolution? So I guess if you want resolution, this is part of what this is about. And so today, mostly I'm thinking though about the real, real need to be gentle with each other because we are inclined to make up a story about other people and it may not be true and it may be very hurtful to them and it might be making it that we don't see reality for what it is and none of us want to be in that position. Father, would you help us to see reality for what it is? Would you help us to be kind and gentle with one another? Would you help us not to belittle or deride our neighbors, but to seek their well-being, to seek their health, to seek their prosperity, and to seek real reconciliation where it's required? Lord, would you help us to, to change the situations for better rather than for worse? We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.